So I hope you're all doing well. If you haven't played yet with DaVinci Resolve 18, I would suggest taking a look at it. There's a lot of really cool elements there. And I wanna quickly show you guys how we can use tools from the color page and use them specifically in Fusion to be able to do things like text reveals and stuff like that. There are a lot of different other use cases for this, but I thought the easiest one would be like a text reveal where people have an object or an element or people wipe across the screen and then it's revealing some text, or we could use it to cut out a object or an element with this process. So let me quickly show you, cause I think that it's pretty cool. So let's just jump right over into DaVinci Resolve and we're just going to, uh, I guess we'll go over project settings here quick because this will be a critical thing to know to get this to work correctly. My resolution, now these parameters aren't really that, um, it's not critical to know, but just understanding why we were going to do the steps that we're going to do. So 1080, is our resolution 25 frames per second now if we look at our shots and we look at the metadata on these shots these shots are you know 3840 by 2160 at 25 frames per second but we're going to take all of them and put them into a timeline right so once we have them in a timeline now they're in a uh 25 frames per second but a 1080 timeline if we click on them, we still have that uh, resolution. This is going to be critical, especially if you're trying to get good mats that are very accurate, because there's a couple of steps that we have to do here. So like, let's say we're looking at this project here and we have pretty much a commercial, right? For a restaurant and this burger here, maybe we are asked, okay, we wanna have text up here, but we want the burger to fly in front of the text. So that's what we're tasked with doing here. So let's go through the process on how we're gonna do that. First, we know that the resolution is incorrect and we need to get a good uh, mat here. So we're gonna click on here and we have the resolution and we're gonna come up to file, new timeline. From here, I'm just going to change this to mat, just so I know what this timeline is specifically for. You could put like the hamburger shot or first shot or whatever it may be. But then down here, use project settings. We're gonna uncheck that. From here, we can change the uh, resolution and frame rate. And so this is how we can have multiple different resolutions and frame rates in, our, in the same project. So we're just going to change this up to 38, uh, where are we at? 3840 by uh, 2160, 25 frames per second. Looking good. From here, let's grab in that shot that we're going to be adding the mat onto, which is this one. And let's come over to the color page. On the color page, we have always had this little um, magic mask here. Uh, if we come over the little magic mask, but before we only had person. And so in the past we could only track people and limbs, but now we can track objects and maybe anyone that's used this kind of sees where I'm going with this. So we're going to make sure that we're on objects and we want to make sure that we have the eyedropper eyedropper on, right? So we want to make sure that that's on and we want to make sure that we have it on the plus. From here, we wanna make sure that we have an object uh, in view that we wanna have track. So if it's a car driving by, it's off view, off or out of view of the camera, then it comes in view of the camera, then it goes away. We wanna pick wherever it is most on screen so we can um, uh, uh, identify that object to the AI as that's the thing that we wanna have track. So, Let's come in and obviously the beginning there's nothing and at the end there's nothing. So we'll come into, let's do like right here is looking good. The object that, or the thing that I like to tell people is when you make these selections, you wanna make the selection with a very long stroke if you can. And I'll show you reasons on why. If we do a short stroke like that and we come down here and click this little button, we can see that we only selected that top. So that's the only portion that's going to get tracked. I'm just going to kill off that stroke. If we accidentally go outside, obviously it's gonna start tracking the fire. We don't want that. So we just wanna go in and select everything like that. So now we get a good shot on the burger. If you don't have the highlighting, I just did it a second ago, but it's this little button here to see, to make sure that your selection is correct. If, you, if your shot has a lot of motion blur, this is a setting that you might wanna take a look at, is using the quality from faster to better. I haven't seen a huge difference in um, uh, um, speed when it comes to tracking. There might be some to a degree, but I haven't seen a, a, a lot. Um, and that main thing that we're going to notice here, if I zoom in a bit, 
is we can see this edge is kind of harsh. And once we go over to better, we can see that it's going to give us a feathered edge. So that's up to you if that's something that you would want. Um, you do have those parameters there to play around with. So from here, all we were going to do is just click the track. If we come, if we come in, we don't see it and we don't, you know, it's still not selected over here. It's not selected as well. If we click this little button, we can come back to where we have our, um, stroke and then we can click this little button to track forward and backwards so clicking that button to track forward and backwards if we take a look at my system here if i can pull it over we can see that my gpu or my cpu is at 40 percent if we come down here i'm at 100 percent on the gpu now you can see that i only have a 1070 now your mileage may vary on the uh, equipment that you have, but the thing to note is that if you have a Mac with one with the neural cores, I believe that they're called, it accelerates this as well as I believe the 30 series of cards also has a couple of cores that uh, speed up this process. Obviously, if you don't have them, it still works. Uh, if you do not see this as an option, it is because it's a studio only, but if you don't have studio, I would say just take a look at this because I feel that there is a large time savings here, especially if you do this kind of things. If you do this kind of thing where you uh, are trying to um, track or have something tracked, but you don't want you know that area uh, shown, um, this work or this workflow is definitely going to save a lot of time there. While that's processing, I did want to tell you about my website, jrtv.com, where I have well over 24 hours of tutorials going over every single element within DaVinci Resolve. I also have pre-made templates that you can use in your own projects. And if you need one-on-one -on -one help with your project, if you're stumped or need some clarifications on how a tool set works, I also offer a one-on-one -on -one service all of that information is on the website, so take a look. So it looks like we're completed here. And if we go through this shot here, we can see, oh, look at that. It's looking pretty good. Um, we can also click on, how do we see that? I think we come up here and unselect that. We can actually get an idea of what the mat looks like. So there is some stuff here that we can take a look at. Um, Obviously, there's a couple of different options. If you want to clean up stuff, now we have to remember that this is a soft edge because of the um, blurring there. But if we want to clean up the white, we do have the clean white that we can do, right? And that will clean up that a bit. Uh, we can also do for like out here, we can do like a clean black, which will pull that in a little bit. And let's go through this and look a little bit more. So you do have like little flare ups here and there that's you know, going to be kind of up to you if you want to have that in. It's super easy to fix in Fusion, but the big thing to like look at this, right? We have like this really defined edge with a little bit of softening, which will make things so easy. So now how do we get this out of here into uh, Fusion? and not have to go through like, the whole process of also processing this. So like a big thing that we would typically do is just render this out, which will then have another element, which makes things a lot faster. Having these things pre-rendered out will make things significantly faster, especially if you're working in Fusion and you know what it's like to have multiple different uh, heavy processes, like multiple blurs and different things like that, where it's a lot of um, data that's getting passed around in your system having things pre-rendered out in the pipe makes the overall process quicker. So that's what we're gonna be doing here is rendering this out quick and then going into Fusion and you'll understand why we were so concerned about the resolution. So let's go over into the effects. Here we're just going to type in color generator. We'll bring that in. And to get the color generator to actually work, you have to bring in the initial source. It's kind of weird, but whatever. And then we'll go right over. And then we can turn off this. And from here, if we take this element, which has all of our tracking information in, and we bring it in, and then right click, go add alpha, and we track that alpha over like that. There we are. Now we have it uh, as a, an, an output and not just a uh, looking at a the highlight mode, right? So this is an actual color output. 
So if we came over here to the color page or the edit page, we would see that, right? And so we're just gonna go over to the deliver page and we're just going to export this. Mat one sounds perfectly fine. We'll put it in uh, that particular folder. If you did want a very high uh, bit rate version, you could, you really don't need it. But if you're concerned about compression or whatever, by all means, you're, you're more than welcome to do it. But I'm just going to do is H.264. I have it set as best, whatever. And I'm just going to hit render and have this render out quick. Once it's rendered out, we're then going to go back into the main timeline and go back to what we were actually working with and jump into Fusion. So I'll have this render out quick and we are almost done. Okay, so from here, we'll go over into edit. We're gonna come up here and go back to our main timeline. And remember, this is the 1080 timeline that we were working on. If we come over here, just to show you guys, if we go into settings, this is the 1080 timeline that we're working in. We're in timeline one. And what just happened? Okay, so timeline one. From here, we'll go into Fusion. In Fusion, a big thing to note if you didn't know this before is when you have something on the edit page and you go into Fusion, it's going to pull the source material into Fusion so you can start manipulating it. So it's going to have whatever the frame rate and resolution is, and that's what's going to be working with. So as you can see up here, we have that resolution, right? So we just need to grab our mat and we'll bring it in. And let's grab some, a text node. And in the text node, we will just type in JRTV. Yeah, I, don't, I don't even care about font, but I just wanna make it big. And we will add this on to our main thing. And as you can see, it's in front of everything. So now we have to have it behind the burger. And that's where this comes in because we'll just connect this up to the mat input. And then I'll just put this down here so it's easier to follow. And then from here, we still don't see it over here. And so all we need to do is come into the merge, come over into settings, and then switch the channel into illuminance. Now it's obviously in the burger. We don't want that either. So we have to click this little button to make it outside the burger. And now it is pretty much completed. And we can see that it goes now. When I'm scrolling back and forth, it's trying to read both of those files at the same time. But when we go to render this, it will look perfectly fine, um, just like that. So that's kind of how we would do it. If you do see little things on the edges that you don't like, you do have the ability to go into Fusion. Uh, I can quickly show you just a couple of little things that you would be able to do. Because this is just nor a normal thing, we could add in an erode node. Come on. And we would then be able to, you know, have this go in ever so slightly like that to kind of, you know, fit in here. But to be able to go in and rotoscope this would take forever. And so to be able to automatically have this generated is honestly like a lifesaver. Now, would I want this particular text here in front of the fire and, you know, the burger? Probably not. But... I'm just trying to show you how we can go through the process of setting something up like this. Obviously, it's not gonna be a burger in your project. It might be a car, a tree, whatever it may be. You, there's, there's a plethora of different things that you can do, but I just wanna kind of show you the process on doing this, and then you'd just be able to render this out right away. But yeah, that's how we would go with using the AI in the color page, being able to make a map, which then we can bring into Fusion and start manipulating it there. Big thing I wanna just emphasize again, big thing is you want them to be the same frame rate and the same resolution. So when we put them on top of each other, we're using all of the information that the uh, AI is generating. If it was, let's say we had it still in a 1080 uh, frame rate, once we blew that up, all of our uh, um, pixels would be a little softer. If we didn't have it as the same frame rate, there is the possibility of uh, the frames being off uh, incorrectly. So there's always something to look out there. So when you do do this, that is the big thing that I just wanna pass on because you might start working on it and be like, why does this look so bad? You just wanna, you know, a couple little things to make sure of. But that's pretty much it. Like I said, over the coming weeks, months, there is so much stuff that uh, was added into DaVinci Resolve that we can use the power of all of these cool things that were added in, in the Fusion page to get cool looks and techniques. Um, 
You could also use this to for 3D. There's tons of different things that we can actually do. But yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted to show you guys today using the AI built into DaVinci Resolve 18's neural engine to be able to track objects, turn them into a mat, which then we can use for a plethora of different things in Fusion. This particular uh, element that I'm showing you is all 2D, but we can do the same exact thing in a 3D environment where, you know, maybe we have some 3D objects moving around, but we want to add that mat in and we don't want to deal with a whole bunch of rotoscoping. So we can use the AI on the color page to do a lot of the heavy lifting. Sometimes the AI is not going to be perfect and we might need to go in and fix a frame here, a frame there. But overall, it's definitely going to speed up the process uh, when we're working with trying to composite different elements in like this. Uh, especially if you're not working with a large team and you don't have, you know, someone below you say, oh, we need these five shots rotoscoped. You can do it on your own uh, in a short period of time. So that's what I wanted to show you guys today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments if there are other things within the new DaVinci Resolve 18 that you would like to know more about or how you could incorporate it potentially in the Fusion page and, you know, for your different composites or if you're looking to do stuff I don't know. Just let me know what you guys think of this. I have a ton of other ideas that I'm going to be working on in the future. But with that being said, my name's JR. Thank you so much for watching. Till the next one. Peace.